Welcome everyone. My name is Cindy Smith and I'm here today having a conversation with my friend Sarah. Um, Sarah is a coffee-loving, word-slinging, clean historical romance author whose superpower is converting caffeine into novels and I just love that. Uh, Sarah loves to write novels about historical romances but her favorite romance story of course is her own and she and her Prince Charming live um, in a beautiful part of the country as you can see and they have three amazing children and Sarah likes to write um, she her books that she's written cover like a really amazing span of history they there's books set in Egypt all the way to modern today books she just recently released her first contemporary fiction book that last August um, the titles of some of her books are the lady born a cobra hope in cripple Creek the General's Wife, which is the one that I said, and it takes place in Egypt, Trail of Fears, and the Convenient Risk series. And today we are talking about her most recent book in that series, An Inconvenient Acquaintance. So welcome, Sarah. Thank you. It's good to, it's good to be here with you. Um, just real quick to let everyone know before we get started that at the end, we're going to tell them about how to register to win some gifts. There's going to be uh, two ebook sets of the Convenient Risk series, and there's going to be one autographed copy of her new book. So we'll tell you about how to register for that at the end. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, what are some of the things that you personally like to read? Well, not only do I write historical romance, I prefer to read cl clean historical romance. Um, I'm known to pick up a science fiction book every once in a while, but most of my reading is in that genre that I write in. Um, I also read a good bit of nonfiction, uh, books on the craft of writing, as well as books on Christian living and that kind of thing. So I try to alternate fiction book, nonfiction, fiction, nonfiction, so that I get a good dose of each. But it's a pretty good guess that you always have something that you're reading. Oh my goodness, at least one thing. <laughs> at least one thing, yeah. So um, tell us about this new book, An Inconvenient Acquaintance. What was your inspiration for that book? Well, um, in the Convenient Risk series, for those that have read some of those books, the first book introduces us to this world, if you will. It's based on um, an actual place, but it's this fictional world that has been created. And um, so we have the ranch owner, and then there are three ranch hands. And each of the following books featured a different one of the ranch hands and their story. So this is Slim's story. Um, so my inspiration was that he needed a story. I had put in some things about his character in the previous books. So I had some foundation there. But I needed to place it in time, um, close to this time period that I was already in in this series. And it occurred to me that Tombstone was nearby and the shootout at the OK Corral would line up with this time period. So that was the inspiration for, and the basis, the foundation for building this novel. Excellent. So what are the, when you, when you got the idea for the story, what came next? What are the nuts and bolts about how you go about planning a novel? Well, that's a really good question. The first thing that I do is really delve into my characters. I really want to have a good grasp on who they are, um, what they're telling themselves that may not be true, um, the, the things in their backstory that affect the decisions that they're making in the novel. I use um, Susan May Warren's story equation, and so that's how I get my baseline on my characters and their backstory. And then I'll do character interviews, character profiles, just really getting deep into my characters. Now, when it comes to planning out the story, I do a very basic outline because I'm more of what we call a organic writer or a pantser right by the seat of my pants. So not totally in that camp, though, because I do some of this development on the front end. Excellent. The, the three main characters in this book are Ada, mm -hmm. Slim, and Stanford. And Stanford is the uh, the antagonist in this mm -hmm. book. Was he fun to write? Oh, antagonists are always fun to write, and Stanford was no exception to that rule. You want him to be a character, or I did. I wanted him to be a character that people enjoyed not liking, if that makes sense. But I wanted to walk this line where um, 
you can see some good qualities in him, but there's something that's not quite right about him. Um, so that was an interesting line to walk. It always is, but it was fun to write. It was fun to write him, especially his interactions with the other two main characters. I, I really had a blast with that. Yeah, and he he was a fun character. He was we talked about him a lot mm. as you were writing, and I. We, like the fact that one time we decided that he every time he introduced himself it was going to be his Stanford A. Wilmot the third exactly <laughs> and you don't call him Stan it's always Stanford yeah. so I just as we as you were writing it was fun to be able to talk about that mm-hmm. Ada and Stanford share a common upbringing a background but Ada responded to it differently tell me about the process of writing Ada well their background as you're saying is true it's very similar in the fact that they both grew up in a life of comfort and privilege and kind of in the upper crust of society um ada turns out a little bit different with her choices and with her experience with the world a lot of it is due to the fact that she's a woman during this time period for the most part in society women were only valued by the match that they could make And so when you grow up knowing that that's where your value is, it really colors the way you view the world, the way, the choices that you make. And so for Ada, it gave her this drive to want, that she wanted independence. She wanted to break through and be her own person. Exactly, and men did have things that they just expected were going to happen Mm -hmm. and given to them because they were men. And Mm -hmm. she, definitely was having to stand up and and not assert herself but she was able to stand up in her and be proud of who she was as a woman and what she the gifts that she had been given absolutely you'd mentioned earlier in the convenient risk series that there was it was a story about this family and the ranch hands slim is one of those ranch hands and he comes tell us about him and, and how he ends up in tombstone well slim is an interesting character in that he's a little bit broken by his background by his by his life story and i love about him that he continues to persevere and push through even when it's hard and especially when it's hard you know he's hung up by his background for sure but he continues to strive for something better. I think that love changes him. Love gives him the um, the courage to grow and change in the novel. One of the things that I write often about in my books, in fact, you could probably find it in every single one of my books, is this story of the characters overcoming something generally within themselves, Absolutely. but they would need this divine intervention to help them work out and come through to the other side. That's a common theme that I write about. Absolutely. And that's important. That is very important for development in the character, but it's also important for development in our own lives. I think Mm -hmm. people can relate to that as they read. Mm -hmm. Um, A fourth character who's not a main character, but she is there is Mrs. Wilmot. She is Stanford's aunt. And tell me about Mrs. Wilmot. I too really enjoyed Mrs. Wilmot. Um, for those that have been reading the series, we do have a, a more mature character in at the homestead. Her name is Cook, and Mrs. Wilmot is kind of my idea of like a take on Cook here in Tombstone. But she really is a, a mentor to Ada, and I think mentors are really important in our lives. Uh, they help us, again, strive for something more, but also see truth in ourselves and in the world around us. And she's she's a lovely lady. I just like her. Mm-hmm. Talking about these characters and Tombstone, when you started writing, what did what are the tools that you used to help you picture the characters and picture Tombstone so that you could write about it? What do you as an author, what is your process? Well, for historical writers, sometimes you can't go to the places that inspire either Especially because COVID. either <laughs> because they don't exist anymore in that state or like with COVID, it's not really possible to travel there. So using tools like Google Earth and um, pictures of the town from from long ago and Im- just any any kind of images that are out there that are actually real images of the town. That's what I used. Tombstone at this time was a very booming metropolis, if you will. I mean, not a metropolis as we think of in the city, but it was this booming city. They had theater, opera house, 
um, gambling halls, of course, saloons. They even had a bowling alley, which I really, wow. really wanted to put into the book. But I just knew that most of the readers that picked up the book would think that I was being out of time. Right. When you were looking at your characters, how do you, how do you, how do you, what inspires you to write about their physical appearance? What are some things that you use to do that? Well, when I, when I have a character firmly in mind, then I go to Pinterest yeah. and I search, like, I'll search blue-eyed, blonde-haired actress model until I find the person that I think, oh, that is, that is slim, that is Ada. And um, the, the actors and actress that I use to inspire these characters, uh, Bella Thorne was who inspired Ada, and Alan Leach is who inspired Slim. Yeah, that's awesome. It's not something that you, I think, readers would think about, that you, you had, there's so many things out there that will help you as an author mm. to decide, okay, this is how I want the character to look. This is how... I want the town to look. And I think from when, from what I've read from your stories, that all this research that you do is very evident. You get mm. a picture of what these different people look like. You get a picture of mm. what Tombstone looked like or with the Lady, Lady Bornakova series, you, uh, you get a picture of what the Czech Republic would look like. So that's very awesome. I keep the pictures, some pictures of these actors and actress there by my desk and, and I choose interesting facial expressions when I pick the photos that I put there that are relevant to me for whatever reason. And then I also uh, put up a storyboard across the top of the wall to help me follow the plot as I write and inspire me. Yeah, that's excellent, that's excellent. One of the important threads in your books, not just this book, but all of your books, is your faith. How does that inspire what you write, and how do you work that into your books? You're absolutely right. Uh, faith does play a huge part of my life, in my life, and so it's going to bleed through into my writing, absolutely. And in some of my books, this faith element, this fa a faith arc even, uh, is more front and center. And in some books, it's a little more subtle. I would say in this book, this is one of the more subtle ones. It's there, and of course the Christian worldview is there, and it's a clean book. But as far as someone praying a prayer of salvation, it's not in this book. No, but I think you can definitely see its impact on the progression of the characters as they go through the story. When you're writing a story, I think sometimes we get this picture that you just create the story mm -hmm. and it just, you decide all the, everything that happens in the book. But when you're plotting a book, it, does the book take on a life of its own and are there things that surprise you? Or especially with this book, is there something that surprised you as you were writing the book? Yes, it is true that when you start writing, sometimes the story takes on a life of its own. The characters take on a life of their own. And I would say that it is true that once you have established your characters and developed them and put them on the page, when they're presented with obstacles, inner or outer obstacles, the way they react is kind of out of your hands if you're going to be true to that character um, because they're going to respond the way that you've set them up to respond. So sometimes you can't plan for that when you're doing an outline, but it, the, when you're writing it, it just it just flows in that direction. So sometimes you have to make adjustments to your outline or even throw the rest of the outline out the window. In this book, there was a, a time where Slim made a decision that I was really surprised by. And I didn't want it to write that way, but it had to. That's the way it had to write. And that must make it fun for you as an author because you're like, oh, I didn't see that coming. And then to be able to write that out. There's a there's a pretty well-known quote among authors that says, no surprise in the writer, no surprise in the reader, no tears in the author, no tears in the reader. Oh, that's beautiful. Because I can imagine that there will be topics that as you're writing about that you, you did cry. Mm -hmm. Maybe not with this book, but I'm, I'm thinking about like your other books among the pages as you were writing oh, that absolutely. story. What's next? What is next with this series? What are you thinking? Where are you going to go next with this series? Um, right now, I am about halfway through writing a collection of short stories that feature Cook and Owen, uh, a more mature couple in this series, but they've kind of been in the background, and I have always loved writing them. They are so fun. Their interactions are so fun, and so I thought it would be neat to take this this chance to write this collection of short stories 
and really show some more of the humor that exists in this world. That'll be fun to read. I can't wait to read that. That'll be exciting. Mm -hmm. So what, what is next? What books do you have planned this year? It doesn't have to be with the, the series, but what's next? I plan to finish out the Lady Bornacova series. There are two books left in that series. After I finish the Cook and Owen short stories, that's the next one that I'm going to write. And I hope to finish the fifth one by the time the year is out. I'm also going to continue the, the Hope and Cripple Creek series. So if I can fit another book in this year, I will write another one of those. That's exciting. That's exciting. If someone is interested in writing or even in becoming published, maybe they've already written stuff and they want to be published, what advice would you give them? The first thing I would say is you have to believe in yourself and in your work because if you don't, nobody else is going to. There needs to be a healthy level of confidence but not arrogance when you approach agents and publishers and editors, but you need to believe in your work. You also need to be willing to cut it to pieces and fix some things. But I would encourage new authors, young writers, go to conferences, meet with an agent. Even if you don't feel like you're ready to pitch a book, just ask them questions. Um, that time is your time to glean what you can. It doesn't always have to be about pitching a book. I would encourage um, new to the field writers to be students of the craft. I think all authors, even established authors, would say that it's important to continue to grow in the craft and learn more. You can do that through books on the craft of writing, anything by James Scott Bill, uh, K.M. Wheeland, are, those are a couple of my favorites. Brandilyn Collins has a really good one out about character development. And of course, Susan May Warren is one of my favorite writing coaches. So be a student of the craft. and. Find a, find a good critique group where you can be getting feedback on your writing because the more eyes that are on your work, the better it will be for you. And you yourself, you find classes online to take, correct? Or, am I correct? Absolutely. Yes, um, the ACFW, the American Christian Fiction Writers, offers online classes as well as Susan May Warren has a novel academy where she has these backlogged classes, but there's also fresh material coming out every week. That's excellent. So if there's any young writers out there, give those you can give those two sites a look and, and yeah and make your make yourself a student of the craft like you said absolutely if someone wants to get in touch with you how what are the, the ways they can do that the best way to find me is through my website and that is sarahturnquist.com again my website that's how you can find out the best information about my books and you can sign it for my newsletter which my newsletter folks get the the newest information they get it first and then I'll put out some stuff on Facebook and Twitter, which will put my my information about that up. And I am also on Pinterest. And most of what I use my Pinterest account for is to make pay, uh, make a board for each of my books that includes pictures of the inspiration actor and actress, um, inspirational photos that are photos that I have found inspirational about the locations. If it's a if it's set in a foreign country, some of the foods and the and the dress, the traditional dress of those places, just a fun place for me to get inspiration and share my ideas. And I know that with this book that just came out, um, an inconvenient acquaintance, you did the cover reveal. Like so, one day part of the, the mm -hmm. it was, was part of the cover was revealed, and then the next day a little bit more. So that's always fun to do. Yeah. Okay. So like we said at the beginning, you have some gifts that you want to give away to your readers. We have um, you're giving away two ebook sets of the Convenient Risk series and an autographed copy of the book. So show the book. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful cover. It's just... Yes, I, I really like my cover artist. She is amazing, um, and she is so fun to work with, and she really, she, really, uh, she really interacts well with me and really bringing my ideas and my inspiration to life. Exactly. It's just amazing. So if you would like to register to win one of these three gifts, in the comments below, in the links below, will be a link on how you can register and um, it'll probably be live for about a week and then we will let the winners know so if you go there and the link is not active it's the time has passed so but keep coming back because sarah likes to give away stuff so keep coming back hit the subscribe button hit that little bell that will give you all of the new whenever there's a new video that she posts that'll let you know you can 
always grab the new stuff from Sarah. It has been a pleasure to talk to you today about your new book and about the writing process. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Sarah is such an amazing woman. Um, I love her books and um, she's such an encouragement to me as a writer. Um, so yeah, if you aren't following Sarah, do. I honestly follow her here on YouTube, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the places because um, she loves sharing her heart about writing. She loves sharing and encouraging people. And she loves to hear from you. Those yes. who are, of you who are reading her books, post on Facebook where, what, like what your favorite book is or where you're reading her books. She's just would love to hear from you guys too. So I hope you all have a blessed day and thank you for joining us.